Hi, this is Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to answer one of those questions that I get on a regular basis from people. About five months ago, I, uh, I did a video uh, entitled, Which DCC System is Right for You? And in that video, I just kind of went over a, a range of different DCC systems and talked about what uh, they could do and, and, you know, that kind of thing. But I really never got down to answering the basic question of which system is best for you or which one is right for you and that kind of thing. So what I want to do now is go ahead and, and put that question to bed. And I'll try to give you some guidelines uh, for things that you need to consider when you are planning on buying a DCC system. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this topic. Now, I have a hard time answering this question because um, there are a lot of things that I don't know about you and your modeling habits and your spending habits, how much you're willing to spend on a DCC system, for example, and decoders and the like. I can only tell you how I, you know, what my opinion is of different ones. Um, but here are some things that I consider that you should uh, think about when you're getting ready to choose a, a, a system for you. Um, first of all, for the most part, they're all good. They've been around long enough, over a decade in most cases, so that they have a good track record. And you can check into them and find out, you know, how reliable they are, you know, as a manufacturer and their equipment. And so I suggest that, think about that one. Um, there are some new systems that have come online lately, uh, such as this build-it-yourself system. I don't know that much about it. I've gotten some for, uh, emails from people who have built these systems and then find out that they can't get it to work with Decoder Pro, or they can't get it to do other things. And I can't help them, and, you know, they're not going to be able to find anybody else uh, to help them unless they find an online source somewhere. Because, you know, if you buy an, an off-brand somewhere that is not being used a lot in your area and that doesn't have a good installed base of users, you're going to have a hard time sometimes getting the right information that you need. Another problem along that line is uh, with products made in China. And, you know, I get a lot of stuff that's Chinese made. It's very good in some cases. The problem that you run into, though, is with their factories and the vagaries of the operation to Chinese factories. And the fact that, uh, you know, these manufacturers might run into problems getting equipment made and delivered to them on a timely basis. Um, a couple of years, two or three years ago, we ran into a situation where a lot of the, uh, some of the factories in China that were producing products for model railroading either switched or shut down, and you couldn't get Atlas track. You couldn't get Atlas turnouts and Atlas locomotives for about a year because the factory that was making their products wasn't doing it anymore. And several of the other companies ran into the same problem. Okay, another thing you want to think about is how big is your layout going to be? And how many locos are you going to want to run? Because the bigger it is, the more boosters you're going to need and other products you're going to need, the more power you might need, particularly if you are, you know, using large scales such as S or O or LGB or something like that, you know, you're going to make sure that that company has the products that you're going to need. Another thing, do you want computer interface? Um, you know, most of these systems offer some kind of computer interface now. Um, so think about that. Look into it. Make sure that, you know, it's compatible with things like JMRI and Decoder Pro so that you can use those. I, you know, I wouldn't even think about trying to uh, program some of the advanced features on Loke Sound and Wow Sound and even some of the soundtracks functions without using Decoder Pro. It makes it so much easier. And I know people that, you know, they contact me and they say, I can't get my system to work with Decoder Pro. What do you recommend as, a, as an interface or something else to work with it? And I have to tell them, well, go out and buy a Sprog system and use that. It's the most, you know, reliable. Or buy a, uh, a, an NCE ProCab because their ProCabs are great programmers. And you might buy that just to have a, you know, a reliable programmer. Um, so be aware of that. Look into it in advance. It's not something that's trivial, uh, and it, but it's not difficult to find out that kind of information. Download their manuals. 
and go through their manuals. Make sure their manuals are clear and concise and that you can understand them, particularly the quick start tutorials. Give those a look. Also, while you're online, look at their support pages. Do they provide a lot of information? Uh, do they answer a lot of questions? It, you know, do they have any kind of uh, search feature or help feature built in online? Because those are the kind of things that you need to know up front before you start buying a system that, you know, has no information at all. Check out uh, various help forums at groups.io, okay? Uh, Yahoo Groups is no longer around doing their thing, so groups.io has taken over a lot of these help forums, and these things are great for getting answers because you've got a lot of people that will log on there and will answer questions for new users. So it's a great support surf, uh, source for you. Uh, but be aware, just because a specific company's uh, help forum gets twice as many questions as, the, as another one does, that simply may mean that they have twice as many people using their equipment, not that they're twice as bad. So be aware of that. Finally, after you buy, sit down with your DCC system at a table or a bench somewhere, you know, get a piece of track and, you know, a, a decoder equipped locomotive, put it on there, set it up, go through the startup tutorial. You know, isolate everything into the nice little concise steps, follow it through, and try it. If you get frustrated doing this and can't follow through, set it aside, go for a walk, come back. Fresh eyes always have a way of looking at things differently. Most important, don't just sit there and start put, pushing buttons to see what will happen because you're not going to blow anything up, but you might cobble things up enough so that you have to do a complete reset uh, and get tech support help to do that in order to get it running again. So don't do that. Um, one important thing to remember is this stuff isn't rocket science. If you can program and use a television remote control, then you can use a DCC system. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Which system do I personally recommend? I've been using Digitrack since 1994. Uh, that's, you know, over 25 years now. And uh, um, the way I got into it was I was writing for a magazine uh, called Model Railroading, and they contacted the magazine to see if we wanted to do a review of their product. So the editor said yes and arranged for them to send it to me. So they sent me their basic DCC system at the time. It was called the Challenger. There's the throttle for it right here. And, you know, they sent me the, com the uh, command station booster, and they sent me a couple of decoders. I put it together, took it over to my big club, hooked it up to the club layout, and ran all over the place, had a great time. I immediately sold my CTC-16 command control station system and purchased more decoders from Digitrex because I thought it was that great. And I've been using it ever since. Now, a lot of people, though, also use Digitrex. And why is that? Well, in the late 90s, Digitrex came up with a program for clubs where if the club wanted to convert to DCC, they would sell them everything they needed at wholesale, 40% off, okay? Also, every member of the club could buy in on that same order. It had to be all one order. My club converted in the late 90s, and, you know, we put together the biggest order Digitrax had ever had at that time. It took them over six months to fulfill that order. And, you know, for Digitrax, it was great because it gained them market penetration nationwide by selling to all these clubs and all the members of these clubs. And what that meant was in the future, all those club members would be buying more Digitrex throttles and boosters and command stations and decoders, and new people coming into the club would do the same thing. You know, the club that I belong to until recently is a Digitrex club. All the members still, practically all of the members, use Digitrex equipment. Almost everybody I know in this area, from South Carolina to the Tennessee border, on the north and the west, and everywhere around in this area, use Digitrex equipment. So it had great penetration, and it gained them a bunch of customers, both then and into the future. 
As a result, Digitruck still has probably 50 to 75 percent of the market share in North America for DCC. Um, and I still use their equipment that's over 20 years old. This is one of their early Digitruck Simplex wireless throttles. I use this at operating sessions, you know, that I go to on a regular basis. And it's, it's that old. Uh, I also use their DT500 you know, uh, duplex throttle a lot because I really love it. Their equipment is great. It's lasted for 20 years in some cases or more. And, you know, in that time period, uh, 25 years, I've only had to send two things back to Digitrex for repair. So, you know, given my record recently with Sony Handycams, um, you know, Digitrex wins that one hands down. Um, they've also been very advanced as far as developing new accessories. They had infrared wireless throttles quite early. They came up with simplex radio throttles very early. And then they went into duplex throttles uh, a number of years ago. So they've always been there with advanced accessories. Right now, they've uh, over the last three or four years, they've totally revamped their entire product line, uh, made most of their cap uh, systems and products so that consumers themselves can upgrade the firmware, the software in it, so that it doesn't get old, and they can add new functions as it moves along. So I think all of that stuff has, has made them a winner in my book. Um, in the same vein, they have a large selection of accessories built around their LocoNet, uh, which you know, allows communication between all of the different components. It's like an Ethernet network that connects all of their different components, the throttles, the boosters, the radio receivers, command station, the whole nine yards, our accessory decoders. They can all talk to each other. They can then talk to a computer. So you can use it with you know, Decoder Pro and JMRI to control your layout if you want. So it, it just they just have a lot of great capabilities there. Um, they also have a full range of systems, okay? So you can buy a Digitrack system like a um, Zephyr. This is an older Zephyr, but you can buy this. You could buy this and then move up to their mid-range uh, system and their high-end system, their DCS 240 now. And everything that you've bought to work with this will be upwardly compatible, and you could still use this as a local throttle. So they have a lot of those capabilities. Um, one downside, they have famously over-technical manuals. And that's one of the realities of a technical subject like DCC. Um, it is very technical, and they use a lot of technical jargon, and people can get confused because of that. And it takes a while to catch on. However, they do have a quick start section, a tutorial, at the beginning of each of their manuals for you to follow step by step and get an understanding of how it works without getting overly technical. So take it slow, take it easy, and we'll see you on Monday with another bonus video. Although, I don't think my Sony cameras are going to be back yet. You know, this virus is holding up repairs, so it's one of the realities. Take it easy, and stay safe and healthy. Bye now.